Welcome back. Well, I'm glad to welcome our dear friend, Tim Moy, who is our Director of Security. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? Oh, it's very good to see you. Yeah, and thank I, you. Uh, you, you look so bright and happy. I am. I've got, is, uh, I'm modeling our new good neighbor uh, building captain uh, emergency vest, and it's got the the, the name tag on it. Like, can I, oh, can I, I stand up? I want to see you model. There Please. we go. Show so, us. La, oh, la, la. I'm losing my mic here. La, la, la. There's but the front. But this is the front. And obviously, it's There's clearly marked back. on the back. Yes. And so we like it that way because in the event of an emergency, and let's say there's a power outage or yeah. some type of earthquake or what have you, and we've got a few hundred building captains or good neighbor building captains, mm -hmm. and if someone's knocking on your door and you look out, you want to know who that person is. And we're hoping that this vest is, is clear enough for them to be able An to see. An easy identifier. An easy identifier is correct. And right. it does have the title, Good Neighbor Building Captain and the Laguna Woods Village right. logo. Right. So if there's any other logo on there, that, don't then that's a problem. The don't, and you know, <laughs> we've, we've, uh, we've made quite an effort in trying to train up our Good Neighbor Building Captains as well. So before you are uh, accepted into the program, we mm -hmm. have to put you through a, a course. And it just kind of outlines uh, responsibilities of a good neighbor building captain. Well, you've talked about uh, good neighbor building captains being recruited before. How's right. that recruitment going? It's going pretty well. I mean, we've got uh, both mutuals working very hard on it. United's doing a great job. They have a uh, their own task force led by uh, Andre Torn, and, mm -hmm. and him and that team are going out into the community. They're knocking on doors, they're putting out flyers, and, and we're getting a pretty good response. But there's, there's a need here, and, yes, there and is. we need more of them. So we've got, I'd say, 150, 175, but to really cover this community, we probably need about six, seven, 800. Well, true, we have so many properties, so many buildings. We do. So why is it important for our security in Laguna Woods Village to right. have building security captains, or yeah, good neighbor or building good captains? good neighbor yes. um, building captains. Resident uh, volunteer building that's captains. That's right, well, one, we appreciate the, the volunteers, the, those who step forward and, and want to lend assistance. But we know during an emergency, if it's a major emergency, a major earthquake, mm -hmm. first responders may not be able to um, get here as quickly as we would like. And so we're depending on our good neighbor building captains to do an assessment of their building, yes. check for any injuries, uh, fill out that form that we train them and give them, and then get that to our emergency operations center so we can start prioritizing mm -hmm. what uh, type of action we need to take first. Who do we need to go in and, and um, help, um, whether it be a, a medical injury or just evacuate and to relocate. So there's, there's quite a bit, but that's only one part. The other part is we know our, our good neighbor building captains and our building captains in the Garden Villas, mm -hmm. they're the eyes and the ears. And when something doesn't look right, the neighbors tend to come to them. Yes. And what we hope that they do is be that bridge of communication, and then they come to us, and we're able to address some issues. But uh, we, we love the fact that we've got some involved citizens, involved um, community members that are gonna uh, work uh, collaboratively with um, with security or whatever division uh, mm -hmm. the issues are occurring at. Because our community is large. It is. It, you know, it's a, a lot of residents, right. and so having these kind of good neighbor resident volunteers, just to be yes. the eyes and ears, just to keep an right. eye out. Right, right. And we do have a lot of good neighbors in, in our community as well. we a tremendous amount. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, and, you know, there are times where they'll call dispatch and say, hey, there's somebody not known to the area I'd like to have mm -hmm. uh, security roll by. Absolutely. That's, that's exactly what security is there for. And there's been times where I've, I've talked to some members and said, well, I, I just wasn't sure, so I decided not to call. True. We say, no, call anyway, and we'll come and check it out. Because if you're a guest, uh, not a resident here, you know, you're supposed to be with that person mm -hmm. at all the time. So when there's someone kind of going through the community, by themselves, they don't look like they're they belong. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to know about it and and just to see wh who they are and what they're doing. It may be a family member, maybe someone who's lost. You know, uh, people do get lost in here in this community. A lot of these, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the streets lost. are confusing. I know it. I tell you <laughs> what, new, it's tricky. I get lost. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> exactly. But right. this is wonderful too because a good neighbor building captain can also keep an eye out for just about anything that seems a little bit off. Maybe someone's car is parked in an unusual way. Right. They, maybe they were in a hurry, they wanted to get inside, but it mm -hmm. could be that something could be up and right. a good neighbor building captain could be the point person exactly. to communicate that to, um, right. to exactly. resident services. So you have the emergency piece, which we desperately need them, and then you have the other, which is more of a neighborhood watch yes. piece of it as well. Yes. And it does many of the same things, the same, uh, same components are present in a neighborhood watch where 
you know, see something, say something. I mean, we, we're beating that one up quite a bit, but mm -hmm. it makes sense, ah. especially in here. If you see something that doesn't seem Like maybe right. someone's door is ajar. And sure. that is right. just unusual. It's been exactly. a, the door's been slightly ajar for a few hours. Like, why would that happen? So, right. of course, it's a good thing. So, uh, what kind of commitment does it require to become a, a good neighbor building? Captain? Right. Great question, Connie. So, it depends on what you want to do. We have those who want to take those first aid classes. They want to do the CPR, mm -hmm. um, and that's great. But it's not mandatory. What we're asking for is just to sign up and attend one class, wow. and that, and we're going to give you the tools. Um, the forms, what have you, so that if there's an emergency, you know what to do. You know how to check on your building yes. and report that up. That's it. But if you want to do more, we love it. I, I just don't, I, I know I've, I've gotten a little bit of uh, pushback from, from some of the, uh, our members. It's like, hey, I'm retired. Um, I'm enjoying life. I, I belong to a few uh, clubs. I don't want that big of a commitment. Yes. We'll take you anyway. That's fine. <laughs> All we're asking for is just a, a little bit. But then again, if you are a building, a good neighbor building captain, it's mm -hmm. a great way to meet people too. I mean, other there are other reasons right. why you'd want to do this. Yeah, there's that social piece too. You get to know your your neighbors. I know that there's uh, groups that have had uh, barbecues, what have you, and, mm -hmm. and it is it's uh, an opportunity to find out a little bit about somebody, uh, where they're from, and and it brings a neighborhood together where yes. you you feel part of a community, and that's that's the part where I think our good neighbor building captains can play as well. Um, I, I can tell you in the Garden Villas, they've got a great program there and a little different titles. They are called Building Captains, very well established, mm -hmm. but they have quarterly meetings. Uh, it's, you can see people know each other by first name and, and we're trying wonderful. to duplicate that. Yes. Matter of fact, this next Tuesday, we're having a Good Neighbor Building Captain Appreciation Barbecue. Oh. Yeah, and so we're going to bring them all in. We're going to hand out these vests. Where, where, where will this be, the barbecue? That's a good question. Where is it? <laughs> I don't remember. We sent out a, this is only for our current um, uh, building captains. Okay. So it's not a community wide event. I think it's at Clubhouse 2. Okay. Right. So, so if you're the a building, building if, captain, if you are building captain. Right. So they're invited. Um, and if, if for those who, who want to become building captains, uh, another training is going to be coming out. We'll be posting it in the Globe and, and we'll email it. We'll, we'll send it out uh, throughout the community. And so we do want people to come in. But my goal and the team's goal is to make this kind of a social thing where we can come together, we can bring in some speakers and have a nice time. And, and this Tuesday is going to be one of them. That's great. Right. And it, it is good to just know that you have someone looking out for you. Absolutely. In, in case you live alone, it's, right. it's a really good feeling to it know is. that there's always someone who's just keeping an eye on right. your whole world and making Absolutely. sure that everything's okay. Whatever, whatever the issue might be. Correct. Well, we know that residents may be displaced during a disaster, but tell me something about residents' pets. Oh, I know. Well, we have a lot of animal lovers here we do. in the village, and and that that um, topics come up a few times. It's like, okay, got it. I understand that um, I can go to a clubhouse, and that might be a reception center for for uh, where I can stay until family comes. Mm -hmm. But what about my animal? What about my pets? I'm not leaving my pet behind. Right. And we know that most Red Cross facilities do not take in pets. Yes. So it's important to do your homework in that. We do have in part of our emergency operations plan. Uh, we're using the tennis courts to store animals in the event of a, you know, some type of catastrophe. Mm -hmm. But what we're asking you to do is do a little prep work, mm -hmm. um, make sure you, know, you have the medication, make sure you have some dog food, and we need a crate. If you have a small animal, we're going to need to keep it in that crate. Mm -hmm. We can't have you know a few hundred dogs or animals or cats running around the tennis courts. I was wondering when you said you know we're going to keep them in the tennis courts, and that's a wonderful idea because right. it's a very safe enclosure. Correct. But you would need to have them crated and right. in their kennels. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is just to know your animal shelters and. If you know that, you know, I've got some family nearby, I'm going to take advantage of that. I, I appreciate all the work you guys are doing at the clubhouses and turning them into reception centers, but I'm going to go stay with one of my kids. Right. Well, make sure your kids can take the, the pet as well. That's true. And if you have several and they might have animals, just have a backup plan. Yes. Where you, where you can take your pets. Yeah. Well, the pets are so important to our residents they here. They are. I don't know, but I'm a, I'm a dog lover. I've had a dog. I've had dogs all my life. I will continue to do so till the day I die. Mm -hmm. And I know that once my my family's safe, and they're okay, uh, I'm going to be looking for my dog. And what kind of things do you have on hand in your disaster preparedness for your pet? Oh well, you've got to have the dog food. And now my dog's getting a little older. Mm -hmm. He's got some bad hips, so I've I've got some medication for that and it's stored in a very specific area 
I probably need to do a little bit, bit better with uh, the water because just like us, mm -hmm. you know, um, part of disaster preparedness is to make sure you have enough water on hand. Well, you've got to have water for your animals as well. And so then when that uh, incident or event does occur, and uh, problem we, you know, we pray that it doesn't, at least you'll have everything in a, in a location you can grab and go. And but that's also out. good to know for, for our pets, even if it's not a, a community-wide disaster, Correct. even if it's an unexpected event of your very own, right. just in your own life, right. so that anybody can come in and help care for your pet if you have to suddenly yeah. leave your, your home or your residence. Right. And to have all those things in one place and to have all that planned out would be mm -hmm. a pretty good idea. That's, Connie, that's a great point. I, was, I went on vacation and you know we, we left our dog at home. We had a friend come over and uh, he was asking, hey, wh where is everything? And I was able to point him in one location right. and it was, everything was lined up for him what he needed to do, how much, you know, how much food to feed him, and how many little tablets to give him for his hips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's great, and it makes sense too. And of course we ask our residents to do the same for themselves. We've got a senior population, lots of different types of medication. In the emergency, we don't want you to go looking for everything. Right. We want you to be able to just, again, I just call it grab and go. That's like a theft type of term, but n that's not what I'm talking about, grab to and go. To make it readily in, available. Exactly. And also we have other, um, other services that help our first responders come in They see that medications are listed on the refrigerator right. and things like that are sure. available too but it's not bad to talk to resident services Absolutely. and be aware of what you can do to prepare your own self right. and everyone you love and care for including your pets in yeah, case of you, any kind of emergency you can go to the website and look up disaster preparedness and it has that to-do list of mm -hmm. things to uh, store and be ready for and you know you do the best you can that's true um, and just to be ready just in case now again I have a lot of confidence in our first responders the sheriff's department fire department they do a great job we know that FEMA and all the state mm -hmm. will do their best and we're gonna take advantage of it being a senior uh, community here if something did happen we're gonna say, hey, we, we need a lot of help. And right. we're expecting our, our first responders to give us that. Um, but at the same time, we wanna have that backup plan. Well, having a good neighbor, neighbor building captain available in your very own street and community is right. probably one of the better ways to be prepared it, for any it, kind of disaster. It is, and we've got a plan in place. Uh -huh. And so we just need the bodies to, to fill those uh, positions. And we're gonna start doing some exercises. Um, the Great American uh, California Shakeout's coming up. In oh. October. Wow! What yeah, is that? that's where it's um, it's just a, a, a national uh, initiative where it started here in California, where we do a, an earthquake drill. Yes. And so <clears throat> we will do a tabletop with uh, through VMS, the Village mm -hmm. Management Services, and then our building captains they go through the motions of checking in on their neighbors. They'll throw their vest on, and then they'll simulate some injuries or some damage. Mm -hmm. That information then. Uh, there's a process where it gets turned into the clubhouse. The clubhouse then radios in the information or mm -hmm. they send it to us. And then at the, uh, at the emergency operations center, we have to deal with what's coming in. So let's say a good neighbor building captain reports that um, uh, two of the residents have broken bones. Yes. That, that, that will help us during this drill. Okay, so we have an issue here in whatever building it might be. We've got partial collapse and we have six residents that are injured. We've got we've to prioritize, we've got to give them some attention, yes. do some evacuations, or make sure the first responders have that information in the event that there's no power and, and uh, we're on our own going out and seeing what we can find. But well, we've, got, we've got a pretty good plan in place. Clear and immediate communication is always Absolutely. the best plan to have. Right. Well, it sounds like you've got some positions available we for do. good neighbor building captains. We do. Please sign up. We'd love to have you join us. So please come and talk to Mr. Moy That's it. and to your department if someone's interested. Right, and training uh, again coming up in October and look for those flyers. As look well. for the flyers. Right. Okay, we will be seeing them. And we will be seeing you right after this. I'll be back to welcome the friends of the village, so stay right with us. What love and romance have done to me. 